Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Welcome to Cycle C. We, the church provides a three-year cycle of readings, A, B, and C, uh, for each of the Sundays and High Holy Days of the year. We're in Cycle C, the very first Sunday of Advent. And as we gather t- together and listen to the Word of God in these sacred readings, it's not kind of the usual image of Advent or John the Baptist in the desert announcing to prepare the way of the Lord. But each one of these readings offer to us insights about Advent, not just the season, but how we live our lives as disciples of the Lord. For there are truly not one or two, but three comings that we can speak about when we speak about the coming of the Christ. And the first, of course, is the historical coming of Christ. As we prepare for Christmas and the celebration of his birth at Bethlehem, Advent is that time of preparation, of opening ourselves up. And our first reading today, the prophet Jeremiah, speaks about that coming of the righteous shoot that will indeed come into the world, that will fulfill the plan of God for redemption and salvation. But he's not the only prophet, but all of the prophets, and indeed the law itself, speaks about, announces that the coming of the Christ will be part and parcel of God's plan for redemption. Bishop Sheen talks about the fact that the only religious founder in the entire history of the world that has predicted to come is Jesus Christ. The Old Testament is replete with those announcements of his future coming. But not only that, his followers always made reference back to the Old Testament. As Jesus completes that gift of the Old Testament and initiates the new covenant, which will be a covenant in his blood, so he becomes the fulcrum of all time, the fulcrum of history itself. In fact, we measure time according to the birth of Jesus. When I was a child, it was B.C., before Christ, and A.D., Anno Domini, the year of the Lord. Certainly, his coming into the world had a tremendous impact and change that took place in the history of human beings. For some, I think in the modern world, there's this tendency to think that the 18th century was the fulcrum of history, that everything before is kind of obscure, but in the 18th century with uh, political changes, with historical and scientific discoveries, um, there was some kind of a movement from the old into modernity, into progress. I think all of us could testify that modernity has come with a lot of problems and a lot of uh, headaches. Certainly the progress scientifically is great and, and a blessing, but that's not the fulcrum of history. That didn't make an impact upon the whole direction of history as did the birth of Christ. And so Advent is a time for us to reflect into into the past, the past coming of Christ into flesh and blood, into human history. But also Advent is the time to think about, to reflect upon, and to experience personally the present coming of Christ. St. Paul, in in the second uh, reading today, his letter to the Thessalonians, which is probably the oldest text of the New Testament that we have, Um, available to us, speaks about living in and with and through Christ, of experiencing Christ, of growing in the person of Christ. And so that brings us to the fact that Jesus established a church, not simply a country club where people could join because they believe in him, not at all, but a church that is his mystical body, his continuing presence here in this world. And that brings us to, first and foremost, the sacraments, especially the sacrament of the Eucharist, the summit and high point of the Christian life, where Jesus comes to us physically through bread and wine that becomes his body and his blood. It puts us into context with all of the saints, the saints who are witnesses of the power and the grace of God's power in, in, the, in their lives and in our world. It puts us in context, in contact with the, the architecture, the history, uh, the beauty of the churches that we build to worship the living God. It puts us into contact with 
the poor. For did not Jesus say, whatever you do to the least and the most needy among you, you do unto me, he said. And so uh, the church is not an add-on, but it is the way in which Christ makes himself present and reveals himself and comes to us now in, in, in this moment of history. And so this effort, this initiative of the archdiocese, that nothing compares to being there, is an opportunity this Advent to grow more and more deeply into personally experiencing Christ here in church itself and through the sacraments. And finally, we prepare for the final coming of Christ, his second coming as we call it, at the end of the world. For Christians, the history is not a going around in circles, not just um, uh, things, events added one on top of the other in a kind of a random fashion, but history has a trajectory. It has a purpose. There is a plan. And that purpose and that plan is Jesus is coming at the end of time so that the fullness of God's revelation, the fullness of God's plan can happen here in the, this world. And so we hear in the gospel today, Jesus speaks in very ap apocalyptic terms. He speaks about the, tr the, uh, the, the fullness of God coming in a way that does away with everything that is part and parcel of this world. You know, all the structures of government and those things that kind of keep order in our world, even the, the structures of the cosmos will all change. They will fall away. And why? Because God will bring forth a new heavens and a new earth, the fulfillment and perfection of all his plan. And that's where our focus is, preparing for that moment. Whether it's when we die and go to meet the Lord face to face, or we survive until that moment when Christ comes in his glory, there is that point in time that we are preparing for. We live in the church between the two comings of Christ, and it is his coming here and now through his mystical body and the sacraments and his word that enables us to prepare ourselves to be ready for him, to be able to stand before the Son of Man when he comes in his glory. We don't look to the future in fear. We look to the future in hope, in the hope of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior.